my name is Dove Isaacs. I've been with Adobe Systems for 18 years, which in Silicon Valley is a lifetime or two or three. Been with Adobe primarily on the print side, uh, primarily worrying about initially PostScript and now PDF workflows. Uh, concern myself really with end-to-end, -end, from the time one designs content to the time it's rendered on paper. Well, at Drupal we announced version 2 of the Adobe PDF print engine. Version 1 was announced at IPEX a little over two years ago. The PDF print engine is a totally different mechanism for rendering output than we had with PostScript. Uh, with PostScript, if you had a PDF file, the front end converted the PDF into PostScript and then ripped the PostScript to whatever device you were printing on, whether it was plates or zero graphic printer, etc. This had some problems, some very big problems in terms of the PDF imaging model was changed dramatically from PostScript. We added ICC color management, we added support for transparency. PostScript is a, an opaque imaging model. It has color management, but it doesn't have ICC color management. So the trouble was going from content in applications such as Illustrator and InDesign, which is color managed, ICC profiles, had transparency effects, 16 different blend modes, two different color blend spaces, all sorts of other intricacies, and trying to flatten that into PostScript. So we needed to have a means of rendering this directly as opposed to having to go to PostScript first. We wanted to cut the, uh, an intermediary step out of there, which usually caused various sorts of problems in, term in, in terms of imaging artifacts, uh, various types of problems that typically would be found on a printing press at 3 in the morning. At Drupal, we announced version 2 of the Adobe PDF print engine that's been optimized for high-speed digital printing. It works as well with the existing offset uh, plate making, etc. But we've added support in there for high-speed engines, parallelism, support for variable data printing. PDF is simple. Everyone supports it. And to be able to do that for variable data printing is rather important for the industry. Not for any particular vendor to take over from someone else, but rather to increase the size of that marketplace. The Adobe PDF print engine supports PDF for VDP applications. I think by the time you get to Drupal 2012, virtually every single digital device will be driven by either the Adobe PDF print engine or technology that emulates that type of technology. Uh, even for trans promo and transactional printing. Variable data printing, you won't hear people talking anymore about PPML. You'll be hearing people talk about how their applications generate optimized PDF for VDP. And that will expand the, the digital print market tremendously. The Adobe vision for digital workflow is basically to keep content at its highest level of abstraction from the time you start the process until the very moment where you do the rip, where you have the ripping of the data for whatever device you have. So for certainly for digital imaging, or digital photography, that image is going to stay in its original color space with a tag profile. We don't believe in conver prematurely converting to CMYK of any particular type early because that limits your capability to repurpose, to choose the press or the method of displaying that you need. Okay, so we want to keep that device independent as much as possible. In terms of which characterization, whether it's FOGRA or uh, ISO coded or whatever, ever. Um, they ha tell jokes about what happens when you get two color experts in a room. You'll get at least three or four opinions, okay, and they'll fight amongst themselves. So I don't want to even get into that one. I'll, let the, I'll leave that to the color experts. Well, you can currently, you can currently produce LAB pictures, uh, images in 16 bits via Photoshop. The question is whether it buys anything, really. When you get an image off of a digital camera, whether it's a Nikon D3 or a Canon EOS 1DS3 or a Canon EOS 5D, any of these professional level uh, cameras, you're only getting 12 to 14 bits per pixel anyway. You're not getting 16 bits per pixel. That's the first thing. Secondly is that most of that data, the low order bits, are very good for adjusting the curves. But the question is, 
does any device have the capability, once you're talking about the actual colorants, you to really distinguish between more than 256 levels per colorant. Okay, I'm not, again, this is something, there are people who claim they can see it. I haven't yet seen it myself, but we have the software that can handle that. So um, that's a personal preference. This is my third Drupa. At that particular stage, uh, especially Inkjet, was terrible looking. Um, Kodak, for example, has stuff right now that is just fantastic. Uh, all of this has been proved dramatically from one Drupa to the next to the next. So certainly the digital printers, the high-speed inkjets, the high-speed zero graphic, that we see that for certain types of uh, printing, it is definitely replacing classical uh, um, offset printing, and the quality is certainly there.